Welcome to Unfiltered, powered by PointsBet. I'm David Kaplan. The Roquan Smith saga intensifies today with the all-pro linebacker now in a standoff with the team, and he may pay for it, literally. The Athletics' Adam Johns gets us up to speed with everything happening at training camp. And the Cubs and Reds are gearing up for the second edition of the Field of Dreams game tomorrow night in Iowa. We wonder where the movie ranks among the all-time greats, and we brought in the expert. Richard Roper's in our studio. He also dishes on his favorite movie and has some thoughts about both Lord of the Rings and Star Wars. It's unfiltered. Let's go. Here are tonight's top stories. They're brought to you by our partners at Four Seasons, heating, air conditioning, plumbing, and electric. Blackhawks signed their first pick from last month's NHL draft defenseman Kevin Korczynski. A three-year deal worth just under a million bucks. Angel sensation Shohei Ohtani continues to defy logic after his win last night. It's not just he and Babe Ruth who've ever won 10 games and hit 10 home runs in the same season. And an iconic piece of Chicago sports fashion up for grabs, bidding on the sweater vest the Koch wore during the 85 Super Bowl is already over $31,000. Got two more weeks to bid if you want that piece of sartorial splendor. Let's start with the beloved Bears. We go on the beat with the Athletics' great reporter, podcaster. He's our friend Adam Johns. Okay, Adam, let's talk about what's going on with Roquan Smith. He was taken off the pup list, physically unable to perform, for those that don't know. I'm hearing that that means, well, we can now find him because he's holding in and not practicing. Is that the move here? Yeah, I think so. If you're going to issue harsh statements to a national reporter that call out the new regime for not, you know, talking fairly in our conversations, listing our owner in that statement. Well, let's get tough. I think that's what the Bears are doing. You know, there's three options for the Bears right now with Tim off the pup list. It's extension, trade him or fine him. I think they're going to challenge him with some fines. If he's not at practice, if he's not out there participating in live team drills, they can now find the Chicago Bears linebacker. Okay. The average person watching this is going to go, okay, great. So they're going to find him whatever it is they find him. And then when they finally come to their senses and get him signed, yeah, we'll waive all those. Or does the NFL now say if you get fined, it has to be enforced? I think it has to be enforced, but I don't think it varies by team. You could build into contracts. You could waive certain things. I think Roquan Smith, sorry, uh, Robert Quinn had a similar situation where he skipped veteran, veteran mini camp. So you could do some different things to discipline players. But this is now a test for Matt Eberflus. This is Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus getting together and challenging their, their best player on their team, their star linebacker, to show up to practice and actually participate. Okay, you have been on this beat for quite a while. You've broken stories. I remember the day they got Matt Nagy. Oh, Adam Johns is reporting. Bam, and there it was. So you have seen it all from coaching hires to GM hires. How would you characterize the culture change that they're trying to put into place up at practice? It reminds me of the good old days, the days of Brian Urlacher, Owen Krutz, Lance Briggs. I'm not talking about the days where Lance Briggs played for Mel Tucker and Mark Trestman either. I'm talking about Lovey Smith days, my first year on the beat, where everybody's hustling to the ball. You're talking about takeaways. You're talking about the, the hits philosophy. Now, a lot of you didn't call it that, but some of the principles, the guiding principles, the values of that team are the same under Matt Eberflus. He's an extension of Lovey Smith through Rod Marinelli. So that's what I'm feeling. I'm seeing the hustle. You're seeing the swats at the ball. You're seeing all that energy, the, the, the speed, the tenacity, all those things that made Lovey Smith's teams great, that identity. You're seeing that right now under Matt Eberflus. If you look at the defensive side of the football, when I was at practice with you there, Kyler Gordon hadn't practiced in two or three days. I was blown away. I remember saying to you, you were on my right. I go, Jaquan Brisker's that big? He yeah. looks like a monster. I also thought the tempo of hitting in practice was something different than what I saw under Matt Nagy when we watched practice. So talk to me about the defense and where it is. I like the secondary. 
I think when Kyler Gordon returns to the field, and it is a bit alarming that he missed practice again today. That's like five or six days in a row. So that's kind of an extra note for you. But when he's on the field, that fair secondary is full of talent. Jalen Johnson, Kyler Gordon, maybe Kendall Vildor. If Kyler Gordon's playing the nickelback role, you got Jaquan Brisker, and Eddie Jackson. Eddie Jackson's having a pretty good camp right now. You're seeing a significant talent gap between the receivers outside of Darnell Mooney and the secondary. They're very, very good. You got some pass rushers up there who are making some noise, but that secondary could be a real strength for that defense and for Matt Eberflus this year. On the offensive side of the ball, they're down to eight healthy wide receivers as of the close of practice yesterday. I don't know if anybody else got dinged up today. But of those eight, only Equinemia St. Brown and Darnell Mooney are guys that you would go definitely making the roster. Some of the other guys I've never even heard of, and I watch a lot of college football. Does Justin have a chance to be successful this year? Oh, he had a pretty good practice today, and that's what you want to see. You want to see him throw with anticipation, to throw with trust, not just with his receivers, because he has that with Darnell Mooney, but trusting that the players are going to be in the right places, trusting the play call, trusting his footwork, trusting everything that he's worked on with Luke Getze and Andrew Janoco to this point. Just trust the play, throw the ball, have some anticipation, and let's not scramble all the time. He had one of those good days today. Today was a step in the right direction for Justin Fields at practice, and he was throwing to your five, six, seventh, maybe eighth, ninth, and tenth receivers today, Cap. Cole Komet also looked like he is – I'm not going to say he's going to be George Kittle. He's not going to be Rob Gronkowski. He looked better. He just looked more in tune with the offense. What have you seen from Cole Komet? He, he does look bigger. He looks better. I think this offense can fit him pretty well just in terms of being pretty tenacious as a blocker, a willing blocker. Not all tight ends are like that, but also getting him open and helping him out with some play action. Now, separation could be an issue in one-on-one situations, but if you get that play action game going, he could be Justin Fields' best friend over the middle, short passes, play action, all that stuff that you see Aaron Rodgers do. Maybe Jimmy Garoppolo doing in San Francisco with George Kittle. That could be a benefit to Colt Komet's game. And he's getting some good work, too, against Brisker and Eddie Jackson as well in terms of one-on-one situations. All right, back to Roquan. Your trained eye, is he playing linebacker, whether that's the Will linebacker, whether that's the Mike linebacker, wherever he is, is it in a Bears uniform September 11th? Oh, you hope so. What is today? August 10th, so yep. you get a month here for things to change, and I think this is a step towards, I don't know, the negotiations getting a little bit more contentious after that statement, after the trade request, after things going public, after Ryan Pohl stepping to the podium and addressing them. Now he's off pup list, so we'll see where this goes. I still think the Bears want him. I still, still think they see him as the face of their defense. I think their defense is better with Roquan Smith and Matt Eberflus and Ryan Poles. They know that. They believe that Roquan Smith and all and Eberflus and, and Poles have to come to some type of agreement here sooner than later because he still has to play this defense, learn this defense, and be that leader for this defense by actually playing in it. So I talked to a former GM, not Ryan Pace. I talked to another former GM yesterday. He said, I'd pay him 10 to $12 million. I would not go higher than that because I don't believe he makes enough splash plays. I talked to Greg Gabriel who worked in the NFL, Bears, Giants, and others for over 25 years. And he said, I'd give him his you know, contract. Whatever that number is, he wants to be at the top of the market, I'd give it to him because I think he's that good a player. What would you do? I think you have to look at what the Colts did with Darius Leonard and making him the highest paid linebacker in the game. That's where your comparisons start. It's Darius Leonard and Fred Warner. Those are the last two big contracts signed by inside linebackers, and they were drafted in the same year as Roquan Smith. And their numbers are pretty comparable. You may see a lot more forced fumbles by Darius Leonard, but tackles for loss, Roquan Smith has the edge. I think he has one more sack than Darius Leonard as well. So that's the conversation. That's where I would start. But I don't know. Like Maybe this is where conversations with Roquan Smith have gotten so contentious. Maybe he thinks he's the best off-ball linebacker in the game, but the Bears are telling him to his face that he's not. They're saying Leonard is better. We're not going that far because we're yet to see you play an actual game for Matt Eberflus. You can make all the projections you want, but there's some uncertainty here. So that's the unique thing about this, Cap, is he doesn't have an agent at the table for himself. 
He's there hearing what the Bears have to say, all the good stuff, but all the bad stuff about his performances and what's next. And he has to make decisions off that. That's why this is this is where it's at right now with Roquan Smith. Okay, the over-under in Vegas is six and a half wins this year. How would Adam Johns bet that? Because 95% of the money bet in Vegas on the Bears is going under. Vegas doesn't normally lose. Can they go over? (laughs) The house wins, right? Sin City always wins. They can go over. They do have that extra game. I don't know if the the NFC North is going to be as good as it was last year or has been in the past. There's still a lot of changes going on within this division, but that's a tough number. I could see six wins, but maybe a max of eight wins if things fall into place for Justin Fields. But right now, I would probably say, say under. There's too many new things going on with this team. This is a rebuild. Justin Fields has had his good moments in camp. The secondary has been good in camp, but it's just camp. Let's see what they do in real games. That's why the number's at six and a half. All I'll right, the and under. the same number on the Lions, and I'm going over on the Lions <laughs> because I'm a Dan Campbell guy. Man, do I wish he would. No you've shot been at watching, Eberflus. I love Dan Campbell. You've been watching all the F-bombs that he's been dropping on Hard Knocks, haven't you, Cap? Uh, <laughs> he's, he's lively. He's entertaining. He he's Aiden Hutchinson singing Michael Jackson. I don't know. I got the, They're the Lions, though, Cap. I'm going way under that six and a half. Wow. All right. We'll see. A little side action. Thank you for taking time, man. Appreciate you greatly. Anytime, Cap. Time for a break, Karen. I'm filtered, powered by points bet. We're a day away from the Field of Dreams game in Iowa, part two. Who better to talk to when movies inspire real life than the great movie reviewer, Richard Roper. He's in our studio. He's next. In honor of tomorrow's Field of Dreams game in Iowa, our stat of the day, courtesy of Ankin Law, 3126 million for the great Howard Ankin. Today is the list of the best sports movies of all time, ranked by the American Film Institute. Raging Bull, led by Robert De Niro's fiery Oscar winning performance. Number one, then it's Rocky, The Pride of the Yankees with Gary Cooper, Hoosiers, and Bull Durham. So let's bring in a guy who knows a thing or two about movies. He's my friend, he's Richard Roper. From the Chicago Sun Times, no yeah. field of dreams on there. No Mighty Ducks nine on no. there. I can't believe it. That's a that's a pretty stellar list, you have to say though. I mean, it's Where's kind of 
Yeah, where's draft day? I exactly. love that movie. Listen, there's a lot of great stuff. There's the kind of, you know, even something like Any Given Sunday is a lot of entertainment. But the, that's a pretty solid list it right is. there. What's your favorite? I actually go with Rocky. I just love that it's, you know, such a great underdog movie. That scream. Everybody knows the story. Salone's story kind of parallels Rocky Balboa's story. Mm -hmm. They want to see McQueen to play Rocky. They wanted Redford to play Rocky. He's like, no, I'm going to play him. So the story behind it is a Rocky underdog story. But when you go back and look at it, Cap, I mean, it's like, you know, 40 some years, 50 years almost after the fact, it holds up. It's really well filmed. Amazing. John Elvinson, who directed it, also directed Rocky. I mean, sorry, Karate Kid as long as well as Rocky. So he knew how to do that kind of great underdog story. I love Rocky. Okay, so you mentioned Karate Kid, which yeah. I love that movie. Daniel LaRue. So yeah. all that, so that is now on. I think Netflix. Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai. It still stands. It's incredible that. to me. I mean, the first Karate Kid movie was really good. The yeah. second one was okay. Then yeah. they were kind of terrible. They've gotten five seasons out of Cobra Kai. Right. Anybody who was an extra in one of the Karate Kid is movies it? is now brought back. But you know, it's really fun because it's it's like you got the two great guys. You got Johnny Lawrence and Daniel Larusso. These guys are like fifty seven and they're still feuding. It'd be as if you still had a grudge against a guy who struck you out in the little league, you know. Right. And they forget about the rest of their lives. Larusso's got a, a huge motor ship, you know, and he's got uh, all the great car dealerships. He's got a beautiful wife. He's got these great kids. He doesn't spend any time with any of that. It's all dojo stuff. Correct. You know? But it's really entertaining. It is entertaining. So when you, I go to, to a movie and I just, did I get entertained? Yeah. You look at it with a much more critical, trained eye. Do you enjoy the movie or you're so busy? Like a scout looks at, okay, that guy ran that. He yeah. did that. That's, that's a great question, Cap. You know, I've been doing this now more than 10,000 reviews. So, you wow. know, I've, I feel like I've seen everything, and yet there's still something fresh, like Jordan Peele's Nope comes out, and I just love it. So, yeah, when I go to a screening and I'm seeing a movie two or three weeks in advance, I am watching it with that critical eye, seeing if it's derivative of other movies. Does it have something fresh to tell? Do I know where it's going? But I can still enjoy it as well, and I can certainly enjoy things. People always ask me, do you watch movies for fun? Heck, you mentioned, like, those great sports movies. I'm always – I love The Natural, for example. Great movie. The Natural's on. I'm like anybody else. I'm putting the clicker down. No matter where we're at, let's go. Let's see what's going to happen here. Okay, so you come into your place mm -hmm. and you flip the TV on. You got nothing to do, yeah. and oh, that movie's on. It's got half of it left. I got to yeah. watch it for the nine thousandth time. What is it? It's it's you know I, it's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is uh -huh. the recent one from the last half decade mm -hmm. like, or so. Tarantino. It's funny because I talk about the repeatability uh, of right. some movies. There's some films that are great. But, I mean, Schindler's List is such a, a gut-wrenching experience. Right. You see it once. Maybe you watch it again in 15 years out of great respect, and it's a brilliant film. But then you look at something like Fast Times at Ridgemont High, right. which just celebrated its 40th anniversary. Crazy. And you can watch that 20 times and still find it entertaining. There was a great time there, Cap, late 70s, early 80s. All those great you know, National Lampoon's Animal House and Stripes, all those great comedies. And then the gangster films, of course, like Goodfellas and Godfather. I'll watch Seen those it. every time, every yeah, time. Yeah. all the time. Yeah. Shawshank Redemption. Is Shawshank's one another one. Favorites. Uh, you mentioned Any Given Sunday. I like Draft Day, and I get crushed for that take. You know, it, <laughs> you should kind of, quite frankly, you know. <laughs> it's, 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 it's pretty ridiculous. As a guy who guy really knows this stuff, I'm surprised that you can go with it. I tried to go with it, but there's a certain point where you're like, that's never happening ever. Okay, so I got asked to interview this famous actor at Wrigley in a skybox, mm -hmm. and it was freezing cold. So I'm waiting my turn. I'm out on the catwalk. It's so cold. And he opens the door. He said, hey, man, I'm just going to eat my lunch, but come in from the cold, uh, and just we can just BS. And it was Chadwick Boseman. Oh, really? Or Jackie Robinson. Oh, wow. For 42. Wow. And yeah. I was like, what a great dude. And then he was in yeah. draft day. Yeah. Yeah, he was. You're right. You know, and God, you know, 42, you know, it's kind of a standard biopic. I mean, Harrison Ford kind of growling his way through the brand. It kind of reminds me of Pride of the Yankees, mm -hmm. where it's this Hollywood telling of the tale. But it's really well done. And it's just such a tragic loss because he had, you know, Chadwick Boseman, in addition to, you know, being in Black Panther, had done 42, had done, played James Brown, had shown a lot of versatility and was on the verge of becoming one of the biggest stars in the world. Yeah, very, very sad. Okay, so I think the most overrated film group is Star Wars. I don't get it. I watched the first one. I've never gone back. I, not for me. What do you think? You know, 
It's interesting to say that because, I mean, I, first of all, the, the first three, which are not the first three chronologically, and now we're getting deep into geekdom here, mm-hmm. um, you know, they're pop culture touchstones. Now they got all these spinoffs. There's The Mandalorian here and this there. And, I, and I'm, sometimes I got to be honest, I'm a little bit lost because I'm no longer carrying my metal lunchbox to school anymore. Right. And I feel like I've kind of outgrown the material. Mm-hmm. So I'm not the world's biggest fan of Star Wars or Star Trek, you know, and, I, and there's a lot of well-made iterations and sequels and prequels, but, you know, it's like some of the Marvel Universe I love, I'm thor out, for example. I can, you know, Thor can take his hammer and go back to Asgard as Done. far as I'm concerned. We've seen the story. That's Chris Hemsworth, right? Yeah, who's great. Yeah, my but the wife last would one, leave yeah, me for him. Yeah, but, well, you know, everybody would leave everybody for him. Right. Uh, but, you know, like the last one, Cap, was just, it was very jokey and cartoony, and you had Natalie Portman, Christian Bale, Russell Crowe, you got three Oscar winners in a goofy Thor movie, and it's a waste of their time and talents, I think. So I was watching TV yesterday, and I'm like, oh, the last Boy Scout's on. And I sit down, and it's not a great movie, yeah. but I enjoy That's it. just because you got this whole Bruce Willis thing that's been going on all yeah. these years. So no matter what he does, you're like with him. I love That's that. right in that period where we were getting a lot of these kind of hard R action movies. I mean, he literally punches a guy to death in the scene in there at one point. Right. It's way over the top. Right. But him right there. Yeah, he, yeah, he goes, if you hit me, if you touch me one more time, I'm going to hit you so hard. I'm going to kill you. Bam. And then he hits him so hard, he kills him. And it's like, it's ridiculous. It's a cartoon. It's a dark cartoon. But, you know, those movies, again, they do have that repeatability because you can tune in at any time. It's not like you have to do cliff notes on the plot of the thing. Okay, so people tune in to you. And they want to know, what does Richard think of this movie? Mm. Have you ever had a famous actor, like when you're on The Tonight Show or anywhere where you go? <laughs> you already know a couple of those stories. I do. Um, yeah, I'll tell you this. Actually, this is a different, yeah, Ben Stiller once you know, had a few words to say backstage at Tonight Show. And later, you know, said, hey, it, it, the famous quote he actually said to Roger Ebert, the late, great Roger Ebert, was because I spent two years of my life working on this movie. And Roger goes, I spent two hours. I'm never getting back watching it. You know, <laughs> God bless. Because I always review the movie for the fans, not for the filmmakers. But Correct. here's one I haven't told this story in a long time. Uh, there was a movie called Into the Wild. It's, a, it's based on a true story about this kid that goes out on this survival you know, mission, and it turns out kind of tragically. And it was directed by Sean Penn. And I gave it three stars out of four, which is a recommendation. You know, gave it thumbs up, gave it three stars. And Sean Penn faxed me. He doesn't like email because he doesn't like that people could maybe mess with email. But he faxed me a two-and-a-half-page letter arguing with me about my review and it was a positive review <laughs> it was he just he's just that intense he was like he which i actually took as a compliment because he cared that much but right. he was like i'm reading this i'm going you know i recommended this right it wasn't yeah. a negative review so i was like god i guess i would have got five pages if i hadn't liked it right exactly yeah. he would have gone crazy yeah. well it's pretty cool where you're at in your career everybody looks and goes what did he think that's pretty cool. Well, it's nice of you to say. And, it, and you're talking about a lot of, you know, when we say younger, anybody at 40 or under at this point, younger actors and filmmakers who tell me that they grew up reading the reviews or watching me. That does mean a lot to me. All right. Last thing. Has there yeah. ever been a movie you saw and you went, oh, horrific. And it becomes a cult hit where it's huge. Well, you know, I wasn't the biggest fan of the first Lord of the Rings movie. Mm-hmm. I, I got to appreciate them more. But again, you know, the first one was like three hours and I'm like, there's hobbits and golems and goblins and rings. And I didn't ca- I, I was not hugely into it. And that has become, of course, a huge, huge cult hit. I appreciate your time. Of course, Cap. You're the man. Everybody. My guy. Time for the tip of the cap powered by points bet. It's the same game parlay. We're going to try it again. Pace 1309 with your booster. We're going to go there to get the lefty. Aloy to get a hit. Jose to get a hit. Harrison to get a hit. Robert to get a hit. Abreu in RBI. Andrew Vaughn, two hits. And Andrew Vaughn again in RBI. Get it done, White Sox. Let's go. Sox and Royals tonight at Kauffman Stadium. Don't forget our pregame show with the great Chuck Garfine, the great Ozzy Game One to entertain you. Who is this show? is completed right at 7. will be the first pitch. And don't forget that pregame show. We'll get the table set for you from Kauffman Stadium. We'll be right back. We'll cap it off.
time to cap it off. Presented by our great partners at Chevy Drive, Chicago.com. Well, everything just got real for Roquan Smith. You want to talk tough about the Bears? You want to fire on Ryan Poles in his brand new front office? Blank just got real. You got rid of your agent. You're negotiating this by yourself. And today they took you off the pup list, physically unable to perform. And you know why? Because starting tomorrow, they can fine your butt 40,000 a missed practice. You don't want to play in the preseason game this weekend? Sit out. That's 545,000. They can fine you. And good for the Bears. You want to talk tough? Get after it. They can talk tough too. Good for you, Ryan Poles.